Right, you lot, in today's video, I'm going to speak about West Ham under 23s. West Ham under 23s played Cambridge United the other day, where we won 3 2. It was one of them games I wanted to see because I was interested in seeing who in the under 23s, given the fact that Cullen, Coventry, um, a few of those types of players have gone up to train with the first team. Who's really left? Who are the key players? Um, Zhu, DJU, um, the striker we signed from Benfica, um, he played. Looked very lively. Uh, let's come off the wing a little bit. Um, I think it was a dark one. So he played a very central role. He's a big physical presence, but like playing in between the two um, centre backs. And he was very lucky in the first instance of finishing off his shot. Um, I think the keeper made a save, but it sort of rebounded into the net. So um, he took the first goal. Looked impressive to me. Interestingly enough, and I don't know who this player is. It was number eight. If you watch the highlights, you'll see who I mean. Looked very, very good. Good passing range. Was able to drive through the midfield. Was physically quite tall as well. Possibly over six foot. So I'm interested to see whether West Ham sign him on because he looked like a bit of a player. Um, was impressed with him. Um, moving into the second half, I think West Ham sort of, their, their tempo slightly fell off. I think Cambridge had a couple of senior players in their side. Uh, Cole Knoll, uh, Wes Houlihan, of course, from Norwich. Um, they impressed and, and obviously, you know, they put a lot of pressure on our on our back four and it was interesting for me to see how Nathan Trott would deal with it. Obviously he's gone on loan to Wimbledon um, and I haven't seen too much of him so I wanted to see how he would sort of deal with that level, how we'd deal with it in pre-season. I think for the first goal that Cambridge scored was from a corner. I mean it was a very, very good header. Um, I think maybe the defence kind of could have done better but it was at Trott's near post so maybe they're questioning over his positioning. And then going forward, obviously, they scored their second goal. Um, it was a scrappy goal. They got men forward. Again, it didn't look like our back four could deal with it that well. Um, Trot is one of them players where he makes really good snap decisions. His reflexes, his reaction, is, it looks really good, uh, really impressive. Um, I, I think his positioning on, on some of um, Cambridge's attacks was a little bit off. And I think that kind of gave him the chance to, to get the goals and impress himself on the game. Moving into the second half, um, we brought on Diallo. Now, Diallo is someone who X has spoken about on the podcast as being kind of the next big thing to come out of the academy. Did really, really well. You know, the ball comes from the right-hand side. He drifts into the middle, um, carries on his run and finishes quite quite tidily. So it'll be interesting for me to see how Diallo progresses this season. You know, Diallo physically doesn't look that tall. So I'm guessing his game really relies on his speed um, and his late runs into the box. So I'll keep an eye on him because he's supposed to be the next big thing. And then for the final goal, I thought was potentially our most impressive. Um, a lad called Fevrier played in the middle, um, very composed on the ball and played a beautiful through ball to Zhu, who finished off really, really nicely. And it was good for me to see two players linking up in the in the youth side and that, how that could potentially be replicated um, going forward and, and maybe that's something that West Ham's first team could profit from. I'm interested to see how... West Ham's striking options in the academy come through. Are we going to give them the chance? Are we going to send them on loan? Interestingly enough, Zande Silva wasn't with the under-23s, which would suggest to me either that he's injured, which I don't know, or he's been looked at for the first team. So I will keep my eye on that. I'm going to cover the academy game, the under-23 game against Leighton Orient. We won 3-1. So we've beaten, we've beaten Cambridge, we've beaten Leighton Orient. Good results for the youngsters. A dark wide did really well um, for our first goal. Um, he's a big physical presence, you know. He, he puts himself between defenders. He's managed to get the ball away to Zhu, and Zhu's finished lovely. And for me, Zhu looks like a real quality player. He's able to come off that wing. Um, he's got great finishing ability, particularly one on one. I'm excited to see what he can do. Um, earlier in the video, you would have seen that I'd have mentioned him him scoring against Cambridge as well. For our final goal against Cambridge and for this goal against Leighton Orient, exactly the same scenario. Little less space for him to run into, but listen, he looks like a composed character. I'm looking forward to seeing him uh, throughout the season. The number 10 for West Ham, I don't have the luck or the, the benefit of finding out who that was. Um, did a lovely little run for our second goal. Was taken down by the uh, Leighton Orient player. And Dan Kemp, Dan Kemp, who obviously I covered, stepped up, gorgeous free kick into the corner. Listen, I didn't know, even though I'd done tried to do my research and my homework behind, I didn't know Dan Kemp had that. Um, it's really, really good to see him um, scoring from that distance. I liked his quality even throughout the game, I think, with the, the own goal from Leighton Orient, even in that sense. Picks the ball up the right, cuts him with his left, cuts back onto the right, puts a lovely ball across and puts those Leighton Orient defenders under pressure. The only criticism I have of that performance from the highlights 
uh, was the number 18 got, got done over really by the Leighton Orient attack. It was a long ball over the top. Uh, his positioning was off. Maybe he'd switched off during the game. And that's how Leighton Orient got their only goal. But other than that, really promising. Listen, I think... I'm going to be doing more and more content on the on the under-23s this season. It's really hard from highlights. I hate it. I'd love to sit here. I might do a watch-along with a full game, see what they're like, get an idea about the types of players they are and whether they are ready or not to move into the first team. Um, but that was a really super quick summary. Um, and obviously, until next time, take care.